A new report from the Washington Post says many countries are not accurately reporting their greenhouse gas emissions. An examination of nearly 200 countries reveals what the report refers to as a, quote, giant gap of underreported emissions, a gap big enough to move the needle on how much the Earth will warm. For more, let's bring in Rob Jackson. He's an earth scientist at Stanford University and chair of the Global Carbon Project, an organization that tracks greenhouse gas emissions. Rob, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. So this is really interesting because, um, you know, scientists rely on data to inform their um, suggestions, recommendations about what policymakers can do. So can you talk to us first of all, first of all, about this gap in emissions reporting? Specifically, what kinds of emissions are being underreported? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Elaine. I mean, the gap is huge. It's about 10 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalents. And that's somewhere between a fifth or a sixth of global greenhouse gas emissions. Most of the gap appears to come from land-based emissions and from methane. And we can talk perhaps about why that is. Yeah. If you wish. Yeah, because I'm wondering what's behind this underreporting. I mean, what's causing these discrepancies? Well, we need better scrutiny to improve a system that's imperfect in the way countries report emissions. It's not so different, perhaps, from the tax code, right? Some people just cheat. Other people make countless small choices that benefit their bottom line. Their bottom line. Countries are the same. Well, when you look at this issue of trying to tackle the climate crisis right now in this moment that we're in in 2021, why is emissions reporting and accurate emissions reporting so significant, so important to solving and addressing the climate crisis? Well, the gap's important because we might be overestimating global progress to reduce emissions. We need to know what emissions are today accurately to have a good baseline to understand how much we need to cut in the future and what kind of progress we're making. So the gap that the Post has identified, it's really important. And has the UN responded to these findings? To my knowledge, they haven't yet. They've made some general statements that they'll, they'll look in more detail. And I think it will take some time for them to, uh, you know, to decide what the right thing to do is. It's not that we had no idea that there was a gap. I mean, that was, it's fairly well known in the scientific community. It's a large gap. And I, again, it points out the need to improve the system, um, to have more transparency and, and just better accounting. You say as an earth scientist, it wasn't necessarily a surprise to see there was a gap, but the size of the gap, I think for some folks, um, might be surprising. What was your reaction when you saw that? Well, as I said a minute ago, 10 billion tons, <laughs> that's a lot of, of missing greenhouse gases. And then some things are, you know, some things are hard to keep track of. You know, take, take an international flight. Uh, if, for an international flight, who, who should claim credit for that flight? The country mm -hmm. of departure, the country of origin, or perhaps the citizenship of the passenger? So what happens is that essentially no one claims that international flight. Right. And, and are there ways you think that, I mean, these are, are very specific sort of granular questions and ideas. I mean, are there ways that you think policymakers uh, need to address some of that so that these discrepancies are not so big in the future? I do. Uh, there are two things we need to do. One is to tackle methane emissions more accurately. For instance, here in the United States, if you ask industry what emissions are from oil and gas wells in a basin like the Permian in Texas, and if you ask uh, scientists who study those emissions, there's a big gap, a big discrepancy between what the, what the number is. And scientists think it's much higher than the company's report. So that's one area where we need some improvement. Uh, who's right and then you know, how to keep track of all that. And another one is, is on land-based emissions. They're hard to measure and hard to verify. This would be, for instance, a country that claims credit for carbon entering their forests, but doesn't take a deduction of carbon leaving their forests in fires or other disturbances. So countries can be overly optimistic in their all right. Well, Rob Jackson, earth scientist at Stanford University and chair of the Global Carbon Project. Thank you so much, Rob, for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Elaine.